In Isaiah 59, the prophet writes to a group of people who were apparently facing difficult times. Whether it was social, political, economic, or otherwise, these people seemed to feel like God didn't hear them or couldn't help them. Listen to how Isaiah chapter 59 begins. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear you. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. Things weren't going well. And what conclusion were these people coming to? They were pointing the finger at God. This response is as old as humanity itself. Adam, when he sinned, blamed his wife and blamed God. The question is, what conclusions do you come to when life's not going the way that you want it to? I'm not saying that anytime things aren't going well, that it's your fault. Not at all. But sometimes we can be quicker to point fingers than we are to look inwardly. That was certainly the case with these people. But their own actions were the cause for their distant relationship with God. After Isaiah reminds them of this fact, the people themselves realize this truth and confess in verses 9 through 13. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not overtake us. We hope for light, and behold, darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight. Among those in full vigor, we are like dead men. We all growl like bears. We moan and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it's far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you. And our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And we know our iniquities. Transgressing and denying the Lord and turning back from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart lying words. It has become cliche to say that the first step in getting better is admitting you have a problem, but there's a reason it is cliche. It's a truism. After Isaiah convicts them of their own shortcomings, these people make the realization of that truth and confess their sins. But are we able to humble ourselves and admit when we're wrong? What's challenging about this chapter is that this admission of guilt doesn't change anything, at least not right away. But look at how God responds to their humble confession in verse 15. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and he wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. And a redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. The Lord saw these people who were, like we read earlier, surrounded by darkness, stumbling around, and whose sins had separated them from having a relationship with him. How did he feel about that? Well, It displeased him. And it was troubling to him that there was nobody to help us. And here's where the story gets good. God basically rolls up his sleeves and decides to take care of the problem himself. He saw all the mistakes we've made, the hopeless places they've led us, and how helpless we were to change it. And he came down to fix it himself. This is the gospel story. The Lord put on his armor, came to earth, and conquered sin and death. Who did he win that victory for? For anybody who is humble enough to say that my own efforts have only accomplished getting me farther from God and that I am in total need of God's gracious gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. And I hope that all of us are humble enough to make that confession.